One of the fun challenges I have found in our small scale homestead is finding ways to make our piece of land feel like a large oasis of endless possibilities. And we want our home to be home. We want this place to be our hub, a place where we love to be, and a place we love to come home to. And though we're in town, we may be limited to certain things that a larger homestead isn't, but it doesn't mean we can't do things to get things started. So let's dive into part three on how to homestead on a small scale. Welcome back to Growing with the Rileys. I'm Trevin. We are a family of six here in Southwest Missouri trying to make the most of our 0.4 acre plot here in town. And the goal of our homestead here in town is to focus on growing our own food, raising livestock, and practicing sustainable living. We want to embrace a more hands-on approach to our daily need. And even though we may not be out on a big chunk of land, we can still make this piece of land our own and we want to use it for living, working, and producing resources. So with that being said, let's jump into our third way that you can start homesteading right now on a small scale. Let's talk animals. You know, animals is a great way to get your homestead up and running. And over the years, these past few years, we've been We've taken a couple different types of animals uh, that we think are great for a small scale homestead and are great for beginning homesteaders. And first, I wanna start with rabbits. Rabbits can be a great addition to your small scale homestead. They can be used for food. We haven't given this one a try yet, but it is an option. And although rabbits are typically not large animal, they grow and produce, reproduce really, really fast. And you know, when a female is, uh, is bred, they carry their offspring for about a month. And in just about 12 weeks, once they have the, the, the rabbits, uh, they're ready to butcher. And that being said, their gestation cycle is so quick that they can, in essence, produce a lot of meat throughout one year. Two, there's a lot of different types of rabbits, and there's some called these Angora rabbits, and there's other breeds that you can do this as well, but you can raise them for their fur or fiber. So you can turn this fiber into yarns, but since I'm not a weaver, I'm assuming the possibilities are kind of endless on that. So there's also another reason, rabbit manure. Rabbit manure can be used for your compost, and if you have a garden, it is a great way to feed the plants that you are growing. So the manure that they produce can be used right away on the garden, unlike any other, unlike other manures where you have to kind of wait for them to break down over time. They're quiet and docile, making them a great addition to any small scale homestead. You know, neighbors and kids love them. You know, we'd like to have rabbits again one day, but to be honest, when we when we had them, we kind of just struggled on, on having an actual game plan on, on what to do with them. You know, we'd like to raise them possibly for the manure uh, for our garden, but we'd like to kind of have a better game plan before we get going. The second animal that would be great for homes for a small scale homestead would be ducks. We loved our ducks and we're so sad to see them go. We loved the duck eggs and I believe the breed we had was called a golden hybrid. Their eggs are larger than chicken eggs and for us we loved the taste. I know this is a debatable topic for some people but not all people like duck eggs. Maybe we just lucked out with the breed we got, but we did have friends that once had these runner ducks and they didn't like the taste of their eggs, but when they had a different breed, they said the eggs actually tasted different. So when wanting to have ducks to raise for eggs, just make sure you do some research and make sure you'd find some ducks that are well known for a good egg flavor. You could also raise ducks for meat. You know, there's ducks such as the, the peckin ducks, which are the bigger white ones that are better suited for their meat. Um, and so if you're a fan of duck meat, raising ducks for their meat might be a good idea for your homestead. One thing to keep in mind about ducks is though that they do need water and lots of it, and they'll get messy. 
they burrow in the ground with their bills, then they wash them off in that water that they're supposed to drink. So all that being said, just to reiterate, they can be messy, but man, we loved the personality that they brought to our homestead. We just didn't have enough space, in our opinion, to justify keeping them in our backyard. Animal number three, chickens. We love our chickens, and for us, chickens were kind of that gateway homestead animal that once we got the chickens, we wanted everything. So of course, you can raise chickens for their eggs, and that's what we do. And I remember getting that first chicken egg. We felt like it was such a prized possession. It was just the size of a small golf ball, actually, barely large enough to even eat. But from that moment on, we were hooked. And another way you could raise your chickens is for meat, as long as you would have enough space and the ability to do it. But it, I, I think it could be a possibility, you know, if, if you were allowed to raise some meat, some meat birds there on a smaller scale. And another possibility you could do if you still want to raise for meat but don't have the space is what we've done in the past is we found friends who, you know, they were willing to, they had the land and they were willing to raise them. You know, we contributed financially, but, and then, you know, when it was time to butcher, we went and helped him process, and now we have deep freezers full of chicken. And a third benefit for the chicken is their manure. You know, their manure does need time to break down, so just throw it on a compost pile, let it break down uh, for a while, and, you know, it'll be great for your garden. And last but not least, goats. Goats could actually be a good possibility for your homestead. Um, we have not raised them. This is one of those that we would like to, but we would like to look to, to raise Niger Nigerian dwarf goats. We'd like to use them for milk, and we know we wouldn't have enough space for cows, so why not goats? And we heard that this type of breed is actually the closest to uh, cow's milk, and then their size makes them more conducive to raising them on a small scale. And these aren't the only uh, breeds for milk. There's actually breeds that would probably work better for milking in the sense you'd get more output but due to the size of our lot you know dwarf breed would actually be a good option and another way to raise these goats would actually be for their meat and I don't know if I'd recommend that in a backyard setting but it is a possibility you know I feel like with goats you either like them or you don't I hear they can be a lot of work possibly slightly destructive I also know they have to have company. So if you are planning on getting goats, just know, plan on getting more than one for your homestead. There you have it. Any of these animals a win for your homestead? Let me know what you think. You know, this list of animals is by no means a comprehensive list, uh, you know, but there are possibilities for livestock on a small scale. And I hope this helps as you contemplate how to grow your homestead, no matter your space. I just wanna thank you so much for tuning in. Join us again here soon, as we will wrap up this series on how to homestead on a small scale. See y'all later. Bye.